Hey parents, it's James Evans. I'm here today with Dr. Jimmy Sullivan, our new director of schools. And just like we did a couple weeks ago, we are doing today's director's update about our school board meetings that we had this week. So Dr. Sullivan, yep. fire away. So first we want to congratulate Whitworth Buchanan Middle School. They were named a model school for us this past school year. I'm extremely proud of not only the teachers and staff, but also the community and students for that award that they're recognized. There's very few across the entire country, so congratulations to them. Um, next, we had several updates uh, with our board meeting that we had our work session on Monday, and then we had our board meeting last night on Wednesday. We want to thank the board for continuing to look at hard to staff areas. So we've had a lot of success with offering a signing bonus for, or really just an, a, an employment bonus for some of our schools that have been a little bit harder to staff. So we've added Roy Waldron to that case. Just as an update, parents, we're down to below 100 openings. Um, I know that any openings or too many openings, but we work in daily to continue. We have about 3,600 certified teachers, and so we're about 97.5% of our classrooms and all teaching positions are filled. We're continuing to work to make sure that we have all of our classrooms filled. Next, uh, this is for more of our employees. So we are going to be, the last couple years, we have not had our classified staff. And so whether it's instructional assistants, um, different varying instructional support staff weren't necessarily allowed to help coach extracurricular activities. And we are going to be changing that. And so if you are a classified staff member and you're interested in helping out some of our extracurricular activities, uh, we're going to be looking at paying uh, that stipend as well and opening that back up. Uh, on this next one, I really want to be the one that kind of sets it up because okay. I know my son's going to appreciate that. My children are going to love this, that we have changed the grading scale. Absolutely. So uh, a state law change was the grading scale that we are all used to, used to be 93 to 100 um, and followed all the way down. 9 through 12 it is a state law that the grading scale now is 90 to 100. For an A, we go from 80 to 89 for a B, 70 to 79 is a C, 60 to 69 is a D, and below a D, or below a 60 is an F. Um, we are choosing as a school district to not just do 9 through 12. We want our parents to have the same grading scale no matter what grade level their student is in. And so we will have the grading scale in third through 12th grade um, on that modified 10 point scale. It matches what our colleges do. And it's really gonna help set our students up for success. Uh, multiple states around us use that grading scale. So our kids were necessarily at a disadvantage when they were going for scholarships with students from other states. Again, yep. that'll be third through 12th grade. Kindergarten through second grade has a standards based report card, so they don't necessarily get numbers. And one reason the state uh, standardizes that is because of the HOPE scholarship so that we're all on the same scale for high school, right? Absolutely. So that we our students have the same advantage across the state uh, and really in competing with other states as well. And so we've also got some uh, changes that are going to take place this year because of devices, personal communication devices, usually cell phones or, or smart watches, things like that. They have been causing more and more of a distraction mm -hmm. in the classroom. So we think we've come up with something that parents and we even think students will understand right. kind of a happy medium. There. Yeah. Um, and just to kind of summarize, we have policy meetings. We have policy meetings about once every two months. We had a policy meeting last Monday. And what those policies do kind of set how we operate as a school district. One of those policy changes, as Mr. Evans mentioned, was about personal communication devices and just devices in general. We realized that going back to five years ago and saying don't bring your devices to school is not realistic, especially when we're looking at safety and communication with parents um, for their children. And so what we are asking and what our policy states is for those devices to be turned to silent, uh, not vibrate, not so that they're ringing, um, but that way parents still have access to their children when they're in school, but it's protecting that sanctity of classroom instruction so that we can focus our students on what is needed for instruction. The other part of that is their own personal computers. Uh, we're asking for those to stay home. Um, we're not going to support those at the district level. We'll be sending you a whole lot more information, but we have devices for each one of our students. We realize, myself included, when I go home, I use my own personal device. Um, but when I'm in the, an environment like a school setting, you know, we're going to use our school devices that are connected to all of our networks. And in the past, we've allowed those devices because we didn't have one-to-one, -one, but we now have the ability to give everyone in middle school and high school their own computer device, yep. which will have our filters on it, will help protect students and also the uh, integrity of our network. Uh, and that so that there will be a computer and we want to make sure the parents know this before tax-free weekend So you don't feel pressured that you need to run out and buy a computer y Your student will be assigned one if they're in middle school or high school Right, and that's something we're thankful to our school board for for supporting that over the last couple of years for us to be that one-to-one -one device Again, it doesn't mean that your child may not need a device at home And so you of course have that 
option as a parent, but as a school district, we felt like it was the right thing to do to make sure our students have access to that. And again, safety, security, making sure student data is protected. We want to make sure we're using our school devices and not letting other things into the network. Okay, and then the last thing you wanted to talk about was yep. some of the instructional materials. And so there's been a lot of attention around instructional materials, and we'll be doing a whole parent series around um, instruction, around standards. We mentioned this last time on our last director's update, but we have several policies. So if you have instructional uh, materials, textbooks, as we talked about, are approved at the state level, and we have a local uh, committee that looks at those anytime we have an adoption. But we also know there's instructional materials outside of textbooks. And so if there's an issue, we'll make, uh, there's always been a policy for it, and now it just kind of revises and brings that policy to the forefront of if a parent has a complaint about an instructional material, that they have a policy and a procedure to bring that forth. We also, the same thing with library books. There's been a lot of attention on that. Um, and so that has a fine balance between uh, allowing students and parents to read what they need, but also making sure that it is grade level and age appropriate. And so we have a policy for that that we'll be giving you much more information about, but just wanted to highlight that those are things that are that are on the forefront of what we're looking at. Okay, and so we've got the first day of school coming up a week from tomorrow. Uh, so the first two hour day is August 5th, and the first full day is that Monday, August uh, 8th, is that right? Yes, August 8th. Uh, August 8th. Uh, we have been pushing out a ton of information to parents because this is that season where parents are you know, doing the last minute things like back to school shopping and things like that. If you aren't getting those emails, check with your school, make sure you're, they've got your email address. But we also have a back to school section on our district website, which has some of the common things you need like bus routes, how to sign up for free and reduced lunch, school supplies, bell times, all those sorts of things. If you're missing something, either contact your school or give us a shout and we'll make sure you have that information. We'll continue to send things out over the next week and we're looking forward to the beginning of another great school year. Thanks for all that you do. Thank you.